tonight, like I said, I told you already, I'm not preaching at you. We've got all of these chairs lined up here, ready to go tonight. And so what I need your help to do tonight is if, so uh, I'll be finishing up, I'll tell you a little bit real quick. I'll be finishing up my senior year, my bachelor's degree at North Point in the fall, which is awesome. Finally, thank, praise the Lord, four long years. I mean, they were actually pretty fast once you really think about it. But anyways, so I'll be finishing up. But every Monday uh, during school, when we have chapel. And during chapel, we often will have guest speakers. And when we have these guest speakers, we do something a little bit different. When we, uh, when, you know, whoever um, uh, invites them to the stage or gives them, you know, a little background about who it is, um, we, uh, when they come up, the, the, the North Point students and staff, we all give the craziest, the wildest applause that we possibly can to honor them, to show them that they are loved. So that's what I need your help with tonight. And you're probably wondering why. Well, the reason is, is because tonight I need your help um, inviting to the stage, welcoming each and every single one of, or most of, your leaders tonight, um, because we're going to be doing a Q&A panel, where all, most of the leaders will be up here tonight answering questions that, like I said, as we finish off this Got Question series, um, they're going to be helping us. It's a different opinion, different experience, different audience, different people, instead of just myself, boring old Drew, Pastor Drew, oh, do you can preach me again? No, it's going to be different. We're hearing other people. So uh, like I said, help me welcome each of your leaders who are going to help do the Q&A panel. Come on, give it up for them. Come on and join me, Q&A panel. Let's go. Rowdy applause. Come on. Yeah. Woo join us up here on stage. Go ahead and feel free. Let's feel free to go ahead and space out these chairs a little bit more if you guys are comfortable with it. Go ahead and uh, take one, pass it down. Pass it down, pass it around. It's gonna be an awesome time. Awesome time. Did you, what did I do with the mic? Did I move the microphone? Oh, I know I'm holding one, but we have a second one. What did I do with it? Did I do something with it? Did one of you guys take it? Is one of you guys playing a trick? Playing a joke on me? I'm legit so confused. What did I do with it? Oh, I put it, mm, smart, big brain. I got a small brain. I put it over here. Nobody played a trick on me. It was just myself playing a trick on myself. Uh, who needs this microphone? Well, you, Joan Pam, needs this microphone. Thank you. Well, I don't know why I said thank you when I give it to you. This is like what? <laughs> Here. I bring this a little bit closer. Here's a microphone for you. I think, yeah, you two will go ahead and share. Yeah, that'll work perfect. I need my questions. All right. We're ready. Q&A panel. We're starting off. So what, what we're doing tonight is each of us will go through, we got a list of questions here given to your leaders. And what we're going to do tonight is we're going to try to answer as many as we possibly can. I'm not going to lie, we have a lot, but we're going to do our best. So we're going to jump right into it. We're going to be answering the questions that, again, that you guys asked that one night four weeks ago already, literally a month ago, that blows my mind. It's already been four weeks. But the questions that you guys asked, we're going to walk through them and we're going to answer them if I don't knock over that microphone. So the first question tonight that I want to ask the panel here this evening. Number one, we're starting off maybe a little light, maybe a little easy. Can you actually experience God and his love? If the answer is yes, how? How do you experience it? So we're going to take a second, and each of you can see the questions here up on the screen. You can read it for yourself. Maybe think of your answers as the leaders here think about, digest, question, and ask themselves this question. If you can experience how, can you? Can you experience this love? And if so, if the answer to that question is yes, how do we do it? Now, I know we didn't really practice at all <laughs> for any of this. So is there anyone that's like, man, I want to jump at it. I want to answer this question to go at it. Anybody at all. We're not going to go like in any order. It's kind of, it's going to be a free float. I can, I can start. I'll start. I'll start us off. And I'll answer. We'll, we'll see how this goes. This is going to be fun. Trust me, it'll get better as we go. We didn't practice this at all. Uh, so <clears throat> can you actually experience God in his love? And I can, I'm pretty sure it would be a unanimous answer from every single one of us up here. The answer yes. is yes. Yes, you can experience God. And you can experience his love. So the second part of that question was, okay, if the answer is yes, how? How do you experience God? God. How do you experience him in his love? And I'll take a little bit of a stab at it. And I don't want to be too general because I want to give you guys um, a time or ability to answer because I feel like I can answer the question really big. But to be honest, from my experience, um, 
in how maybe I experience God or how I've seen it experienced, really, that's a broad, I mean, there's a broad scope. There really isn't like there's one answer that's like, okay, this is how you do it. It's not like you step one, you take this step, you do it. Okay, now you're getting closer. Step two, you take that step and then you've experienced him. There's a little bit of leeway. There's a lot of different ways that we really can experience God. And for my answer, I think what I would say, one way um, to do that for me personally um, is just during worship, putting on some worship mu music. And as that's playing, as I'm singing the songs, I'm focusing on and I'm thinking about who Jesus is, what he's done for me, who and how he works and moves in other people. And through just that music and that experience, um, how many of you all know, I mean, music is powerful. So during worship for me, that's one way that I experience God. And it's never, I wouldn't say, I mean, there are moments where it's like this really big, maybe like get the Holy Spirit tingles where you're like goosebumps, you're like, woo, you know, that kind of thing. So that happens, definitely. Um, but it's not, I wouldn't say it's always like that. It's never, I guess, maybe this ginormous thing. Uh, but yeah, worship. I'll give you guys some time to talk. I'll just start talking. Do it. Um, I'm just gonna, we're just going to go real deep, real fast. Is that cool? Yeah. Can we do that? Go for it, yeah. Thanks, absolutely. Sam. <laughs> you can come every time. Um, I would say this is the biggest thing that I've struggled with when it comes to my faith, um, experiencing God and, like, experiencing being loved. Like, I have asked, like, questions five through nine on this list. I am confident that I've asked every single one of those in a, like, uh, with, I don't know what the right word is, but, like, with... His name's JP, he's like the dean at North Point, he's like a spiritual mentor. I've asked all of these questions and it took, like I was still in college asking these questions. So if you guys are asking him now, you are leagues ahead of me and I'm literally a pastor, so good job. <laughs> Anyways, how, I guess I'm gonna just, I'm gonna take a minute if that's okay. Experiencing God's love, like we understand that like marriage is important and it's important because like, it is the most intimate look at how we, like, how you can experience God's love here on earth. Um, so a marriage relationship, super sacred, sacred, very important. Don't make fun of me. <laughs> um, and then being a kid involved in watching a healthy marriage, that is the biggest way God speaks to us about how to experience him. Um, that was not my experience growing up. I, like... I lived in a house and our goal was to be strangers. Like, I, everyone avoided each other our entire upbringing. And when we weren't, it was like manipulative and controlling and like, uh, like oppressive almost. Um, so being in a church setting and hearing people talk about like at youth group, like, wow, I just feel God's presence. He's really in this room. I was like, where, where, like, who is this God that you're talking about? Like, this is not how I understand God. This has never been how I've experienced God. Um, lots of counseling later realized that um, you actually can really sincerely experience God. And it has to start with, um, I guess the best way someone explained it to me is even just like verbally admitting, like, God promises the Holy Spirit to his people, I trust that that's true and I'm going to believe that that's true and then just shutting up and listening um, and not doubting that God speaks to you and in those moments that's when I finally started like actually experiencing God but it took dealing with trauma dealing with the lies I believed about who God is because of my upbringing um, and having the faith to invite God into that space um, and like even leaving room to maybe be disappointed and just like hoping that God would show up because like the problem is like God's not hiding from us. It's just, we're really bad at listening. Um, and often if we believe all these lies about who God is and if we think that he's distant and all these different things, like that's going to be what we experience. So I guess my encouragement in that is like identify the things that you believe about God that might not be true and then create space to hear from God and start that, that space with, literally just saying like i believe that you promised the holy spirit and the holy spirit is close and intimate and i that is the god i'm expecting to meet in this moment so yeah that's my answer i think good that's good anybody else maybe want to share a little bit of your experience oh <laughs> joe i guess yeah. joe they call yeah, you out. being called on so rachel kind of touched about how 
in our world, marriage is kind of the closest thing humans can experience as like a example of God. So how many of you guys have dated anybody before? There's a few of you. So how do you, you know, when you're dating somebody, you start, you know, you might say that you love them. And why do you start loving them? You spend time with them. And I think that's what so many of us lack and why we wonder if we can actually experience God in his love. Because we don't spend any time with them. We spend time with our friends. We spend time with, you know, our families. We spend time with ourselves playing video games or skateboarding or bike riding. But we never make time to actually have that relationship with God. I think that's one of the ways that we can, can experience God's love is just by spending time in his word. Um, Drew mentioned he listens to praise and worship music and that helps him experience God's love. So just start seeking after God. You know, look, read his word, read other people's words about him. Yeah. Um, and, you know, dig in, or um, get into the worship music. Preach it, man. Preach it. So, I mean, really, to answer the question, there's a lot of ways we can experience God. But it really boils down to is how do we spend time with him? How do we do that? I mean, there's worship, prayer, reading, talking with people. I mean, there are a lot of ways we can genuinely experience God. And that's not always this big, big, big moment where we're like, oh, my gosh. We can experience the love in the little things, experience him in the little things as well. So we'll go ahead and we'll move on to number two, question number two. And this is a good one. I like this one. It says, everyone seems to have some type of experience or answer from God. Why haven't I had one? Why have I not had one? Read that question. Ask yourself. Think about it. Digest it. We'll see if anyone wants to take a stab at this one. Anybody have anything? Pam? Go for it. Chances are you actually have. You just weren't paying attention. Amen, amen. Those moments where everything seemed to come together at the perfect time, that was God. Those moments where all of a sudden you just have this unexplainable peace that you're like, like your life's so crazy, but like you have these brief moments where you're like, it's going to be okay. That's an answer from God. Yeah. And a lot of times we're too busy. We really need to shut our minds down, shut our mouths up and open our hearts and our minds to what God is saying and what God is doing in our life. It's those little things. Um, there's a saying that says, um, God whispers in joy, but he shouts in our pain. And it's really the truth, because when everything is going good, we don't ever seek God's face. And so we're just tripping along, and we're not really seeking an answer from God, because life is okay. It's the, I think it was C.S. Lewis, he says that pain... God shouts in our pain. It's a megaphone to rouse a deaf world. It's the truth. God is constantly speaking to you and answering your prayers and those little things that you're just wondering, hey, what's going on? What about you woke up one morning and there was a rainbow and it just made you smile? That was God talking to you. Or you seen a bird that you just happened to like. It was flitting by. That's, again, God speaking to you. He speaks to you in the small things and he speaks to you I think all of us get into that trap of we want something huge and miraculous to happen and then God is talking to me or God is there for me. Those things are cool and those things actually happen. I mean, I have experience of that. I've broken every single bone in both of my legs and not had casts on them. God has come through. By the fifth x-ray, he has healed my legs. But he's also been there in the small things. He's been there in those moments where... Tears were streaming down my face as I'm laying on my pillow. And all he's doing is saying, I love you, daughter. I'm here for you, and I cry with you. Quick other thought. Like, so I work with kids, and trying to explain, like, how to hear God's voice to kids. Like, this is the example I always go to. How many of us have had the, like, cookie jar on the counter, and, like, you know you're not supposed to take it, and you really want to? Like, we've all had something along those lines experience, right? You're like, I want that thing, and I know that I shouldn't. The voice in your head saying, that's a bad idea, could literally be God speaking to you. Like, it's not, God, like, 
he talks to us about the big life decisions, but he also talks to us about making moral choices big and small. Like, we, I am confident that every single one of you has heard from God in this room. Like, there's no way you haven't. Um, it's just understanding how God speaks to us is where we get, like, lost and confused, I think. Yeah. When I think even, like, even if you have had the moment where someone prayed for you or you prayed and you confessed your sins to Jesus and you said, Lord, come into my heart, come into my life, you experienced Jesus in that moment. Like, he literally, the Holy Spirit came into you and said, okay, I'm Lord of your life now because you said that you experienced Jesus. And I remember for me when I prayed that prayer and I had that moment, like, I remember like I didn't even really like feel anything. Like it wasn't like this, like, I, you know, I didn't even really like start to, I, so I grew up in church and I didn't even have like this moment where I like bawled my eyes out where I was like, oh my gosh, thank you. It was like, I just accepted him into my heart because I knew who he was. And I knew that in that moment, whether I felt something or not, I think a lot of times we base our experiences like oh I know I had an experience this tonight because I felt it because it, I felt those I had those I had those goosebumps but it's not always about a feeling faith isn't always a feeling um, and so I think um, to kind of really answer the question is probably more than likely already have experienced Jesus before it's just maybe we have to understand what it actually looks like or what it means to experience Jesus uh, maybe it means a little bit of an eye opening, a little bit of an ear opening, a little bit of heart opening, um, and broadening our view, expanding that instead of making it um, like we kind of fall in, like Pam kind of talked about that trap, that tiny little box where it has to be something big. Uh, any other thoughts, real quick? We'll move on. If no, all right, we'll, move, we'll go ahead and move on. Next question What to do when you can't feel or experience Jesus? That kind of piggybacks or goes along with what we just talked about. So I guess if there isn't any other bonus thoughts, we probably, I mean, we kind of covered that question in the last question. If anyone has anything, new revelation, Holy Spirit just spoke to you. And you're like, I oh, add something actually. oh well, okay, Holy <laughs> Spirit spoke, amen. Um, so I, one of my friends, um, well, to backtrack, have you guys ever gone to camp and had kind of one of those experiences and you're like, ah, oh, Jesus, I feel the presence. And it's a really cool, powerful moment, maybe every night that week. And then you get back home and you're like, okay, what is happening now? Like, what happened to this cool mountaintop experience that I just had? Um, one of my friends, he likes to say that when that happens, God didn't move. You did. And God is always with us. He was there all along. Like, he's there at camp, but he's not just at camp. He was with you at home before you even went to camp. Um, I don't know why I keep using the camp example. Um, but, yeah, God doesn't move. A lot of times it's just us, kind of like Pam was saying. We get distracted. Uh, we let other things consume our time and our attention. Um, and it makes me think about uh, Psalm 23 talks about how uh, God, he leads us beside quiet waters. He, his, ra his rod and his staff comfort us. Uh, he restores our souls. And it says that he does that for his name's sake. Um, and that means that he wants to be close to us. Um, he does it for the glorifying of who he is. Um, and so God wants to be close to you. And it's not like you have to like chase him or find him or like, I found the secret. Now this is how I connect with God. He just wants to be with you. Um, and all you have to do is show up and move closer to him. So, And I guess to add to that, trust that he's going to meet you. Like, because there's a lot of times I showed up and didn't really like, understand if God was going to meet me. I was just like, I'm just kind of hoping maybe, but just like, like expect him to meet you in those moments. And even on that, like God's at camp, God's at home, God is here right now speaking to you guys. Like remember that as we're talking, like God is speaking through us to you guys. I also want to encourage you to read your Bible. Yes. Um, one of the coolest scriptures I've ever read was in Zephaniah. How many of you have actually heard of the book Zephaniah? Yeah, it talks about God singing over us. And it, like, I'm a big word picture person. And when you think about God singing over you, when you, I always think of like a woman who's holding her brand new baby and she's trying to hush her brand new baby because the baby's so upset she doesn't know what the baby wants, but all she's doing is singing and humming to the baby. That's what God is doing over us. And so I really encourage you, if you really feel like you're not experiencing Jesus, 
pick your Bible up. There are those, those co such cool little nuggets, and just ask God, like, Lord, I don't feel like you're here. I need you to meet me here. And part of me meeting you halfway is opening my Bible up and hoping that you give me a word that I need for the moment that I'm in right now. Can That's I have one more thought? Oh, I'm go sorry. ahead. Real quick. I, I, I love talking. Um, <laughs> but also, I learned a lot at Bible college. So let me share something I learned at Bible college. In um, one of my classes, a class where we study like how to use the scripture well, um, the professor explained scripture as the invitation to an event, and the event is experiencing God. It's so like when we are seeking to experience God, you don't stop at like reading the words in your Bible. Like that is an invitation to experience God. Um, and like when we look at scripture through that, like God, what are you doing? What was happening in that moment? And what are you trying to do in this moment with me right now? Like that is one of the easiest ways instead of just like sitting down and praying like, Lord, I need you to speak to me right now in this moment. Like start with scripture and understand that it goes beyond scripture. That will never, probably, I would say pretty darn close, to never happen. You'll never have that experience. It's like trying to learn a new instrument and just staring at it. You're not going to learn it. You have to try to play it. You have to experience it. You have to do some research. You have to figure out the chords. You got to figure out the keys. You got to figure out how to read music. There's so much to learn and experience about God. And you can't just stare at your Bible and expect you to just learn something. There's a funny video that's like a meme or whatever that's like, oh, like 30 seconds before exams. And it's like this little kid going like this and just like trying to like pour the bio, pour the book that he's like trying to learn over his head. So he's just like, pour him over. That's not, that doesn't work like that. You have to actually read. You have to actually experience it. And you can. You can do it, I believe. So we'll move on to the next question here. Next question is, why can't I hear God? Why does it maybe feel like sometimes God ignores me? Why can't I hear God? And why does it feel like sometimes he ignores me? Um, yeah, I think this is another question Rachel was sharing uh, that she dealt with recently. I still have friends that ask this question. I still ask this question. Um, and there's this book called Whisper by Mark Batterson, um, which is a really good book to understand, like, how to hear God. And we've talked about a lot of them already. Like, just reading your Bible is hearing God. That is his true, real words to us. And he speaks to us through that. Um, but the reason it's called Whisper uh, goes to the verse um, in the Old Testament with uh, Elijah, I think. <laughs> Um, where he, Elijah's on this mountainside, I think, and all these crazy loud things are happening. There's this earthquake, there's this fire, um, as much as you can think of, but it's this still small voice that God speaks to us in. Um, and so, like, if I were to whisper right now, could you hear that? What? Oh, well, maybe Kyle couldn't. She couldn't, but the people close to me are able to hear me, um, and it's like what we were saying before, like as you pursue Jesus, as you spend time with him, as you're close with him, you're able to hear his voice, um, so I encourage you to read that book. I have it if anyone wants it. Um, yeah, you can borrow it after Rachel does. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else have any thoughts? Why can't I hear God? Why does it feel like he ignores me? <laughs> I was waiting for that. You guys keep calling on me. You know, honestly, this uh, this is a question I can relate to. I don't audibly hear God a lot of the times, and I can feel like He ignores me. You know, uh, I've had experiences where we were, you know, we've prayed and God didn't answer the prayer, and I go, "Why didn't you answer the prayer? Why aren't you listening to me?" And Sometimes I think God, we think God ignores us, but God's really already answering us just in a way that we don't want him to. So, you know, what we're asking for is a yes, and God's answer is a no. And when he answers no, we go, you're not listening to me. You're ignoring me. And I think we have to understand 
we're not always going to hear God the way we think we're the way we think or we want to hear Him. And we've got to be okay with that because we're not the ones who get to dictate what God tells us or you know how He responds. That's good. We'll go ahead and move on to the next question. Uh, and I'll, I'll read it. So how do I tell if it's God talking to me or if it's my own thoughts? Okay. I didn't want to jump in too fast. Uh, so this is one that I have struggled with for a long time. Um, I think learning to hear God's voice, I have always just wondered like, if I feel like uh, maybe... I get some revelation from God about something I'm praying about. I'm like, wait, was that God or was that me? And there are a couple ways that I feel like I've learned to um, be able to discern whether or not it's God vo God's voice or my voice. And so there are two things that I would recommend you do. Um, number one is see if it aligns with what God's word says. So um, if I'm praying, you know, uh, God, should I, uh, should I, you know, give this amount, amount of money for speed the light. And I look in God's word and it talks about being generous and giving God uh, the best uh, of what we have and all of those things. I would be able to say, yes, okay, that aligns with scripture. God says that I should be generous. That's just one example. And another thing you can do in addition to looking in God's word is to ask for um, godly counsel. So that means that you look to a friend, uh, someone else that knows Jesus really well and that has experience hearing God's voice, and you ask them, hey, this is something that I'm hearing. I don't know if this is right. Um, can you maybe speak into this and, and help me discern whether or not this is God speaking to me? And when you combine those two things I think uh, you really can't go wrong. And, and sometimes we do get it wrong still, and that's okay because when we're trying to be obedient and we're trying to follow what God wants us to do, he's not going to punish us if we get it wrong. He's just happy that we are doing our best, and he's gracious with us. So. Amen. To be honest, I, I think that was answered great. That was a good answer. Great answer. So I appreciate that. Appreciate that. Um, and I think for me personally, this is something that I've struggled with too, um, because I think, may, I don't know if there's even, I don't know, I, I, I can remember only one time in my life, um, it was at youth convention when I was like 13 or 14 years old, That's the only, and I remember it because it's the only time this has happened where I heard an audible voice. It's only happened once. I'm, I, now I understand I'm only 21, 21 years old, so I'm pretty young don't have a lot of experience in life, but I still, only one time, and I would honestly uh, judge, or bear to say, like, it, an audible voice is something that happens pretty rare. Like, there are people who, the more, more the majority, the way that you hear God or, or listen is, is, it will kind of almost sound like you in a way, but then it goes back to, okay, if that is, you know, what am I hearing, what's, what am I sensing in my heart, this little touch this little pull, whatever it may be, that's when we start walking down the line. But I honestly, I would say, like, don't expect, like, this crazy, hey, it's God, you know? Like, you don't expect this audible, deep voice, you know, that, like, maybe we see in the movies or videos, like, people say, like, that's, uh, to be honest, like, that's not how it works. I've had that happen once, and I don't, has anyone else ever had that happen to them before? Like, an, an audible voice, like I said, is just something that's pretty rare, so... Think about that. That's food for thought. Thought about sharing that. Any other thoughts real quick? If not, we'll jump in. Go ahead, Pam. I think one of the things to think about when you're, you're wondering if it's God boy, God's voice, was it selfish and was it self-seeking? If it was selfish and self-seeking, it was definitely you and definitely not God. Because <laughs> there are times that like we think we hear the voice of God, but somehow it benefits us in this huge way. And like, I'm walking in God's will. And no, you're not. So we really need to pause, like when you think you've heard, got, think about it, is it selfish? Is it self-seeking? Does it align with the word of God? Is it, in the, is it in God's character? Is what I've heard in God's character? What is God's character? It's, you know, like, love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy, it does not boast, it is not self-seeking, it is not proud, it does not seek the wrong of others. Like, you need to roll through all of that. Are my thoughts in alignment with what the Word of God says and the character of God? And if it's not, then it's you. All right, well, we've got just a couple minutes left. 
couple questions left. I don't know if we'll be, we'll probably, we won't be able to make them through it all, but next question I want to ask is why does God give us precious things like family, friends, other things in life just to have them ripped away in the end? This is a tough question. This is a hard thing to answer. And I, I'll, I'll disclaimer before we even start this question, I'm, none of us have the answer. We, like that's, that's just the truth. It's a tough question and how to understand that and travel and walk through that is definitely not the easiest thing. Anybody have any thoughts real quick? Yeah, I'll just take a stab at that one. <laughs> Woo, so fun. Um, so something we see a lot in the Old Testament is like something bad happens. Well, even in the New Testament, everyone's like, who sinned? Who did it? Someone's sin is the result of this. Um, and oftentimes you just like, you guys are crazy. Stop doing that. Um, but there is a principle there. And that is that like everything has a consequence. Um, like if I punch Reagan right now, there is a consequence for that. I'm going to ruin our relationship. I might get punched back. Um, but just understanding that like sometimes like bad situations are a result of bad choices. But to my friend who's sitting here hurting because their parents or someone they know and love had a terminal illness and they, or they lost someone they cared about, um, when someone says, oh, somebody sinned and that's why that happened, like that's not how that works like um so yeah just know generally speaking making wise choices is ultimately going to be better for your life and your situations but because we are a part of an earth where there is sin that's affected humans making us selfish back to what pam was sharing um but it's also affected the earth so there's things like hurricanes and tornadoes and sickness and disease um like, it is all a result of people choosing not God. And sometimes it's because of, like, choices someone made and the natural consequence of that. And sometimes it's just a weird freak thing. Um, but I do know that every single one of those things is an invitation to experience God. Um, so don't write off, like, the things that are painful and the things that hurt and the things that are scary as God hates me or God's punishing me or... Um, how could he do something like this to me? Understand that, like, even in brokenness, e not even even in brokenness, primarily in brokenness is where God meets us. Um, and it's okay to be distraught and devastated and frustrated and angry. Because um, one of those questions was about, like, asking questions and doubting. Like, God is the best person to bring your doubts to because not only is he truthful, he is truth. Um, so if you ever want to question something, question it with God because you will find truth. Um, but yeah, like, this is a hard one, and there are theologians who still discuss this and try and figure it out, and, like, you kind of just have to settle on the understanding that, like, God is God, which means there's no possible way for us to completely understand how he works. So I hope that's encouraging, I guess. <laughs> that's good. We'll hit up one last question real quick. Keep keep maybe the answer short, how maybe each of us, we can just end off going down the line. How do we, the first question here says, I'm bad at consistency, but every time I say I'm going to read my Bible every day, I never keep on it. What's the best way to do that? I always feel bad when I don't stay on it. So maybe if we, I'll start and we'll just go down the list and we'll answer, try to be answered 30 seconds or less. Um, for me personally, uh, if I were to answer this question, when I think about it, the way that I do it, um, I probably will, s I don't want to be the person to steal everyone's thunder and the best answer, but I mean, like, it's personal preference. Like, it's all up to you. Like, the way that I do it is going to be different from the way Becca does it. The way that Becca does it is going to be different from all of us. Like, some of us will get up in the morning and read. Some of us, I, how many, I mean, I don't know if you guys know Tim Tebow, but I watched a video once where he talked about, he was a, a football player. Um, and stuff. He was a very famous person who is a Christian and talked about a video once. How does he do it? He reads it at night. And that was the first time I had heard of someone who said that they read their Bible at night. I always thought it was something like you had to get up and do in the morning. And if you didn't do it, you should feel bad. Um, it's, it's really comes down to personal preference for me I think when I think about it. Um, I think it's honestly dependent on like intentional, um, being intentional with like staying connected with God and being intentional with wanting to spend time with them, not just doing it because you feel bad, oh, I didn't read my Bible today, so I'm going to hell. 
it's more of just like the inner part of you like knowing that like hey i gotta do this because i actually want to pursue jesus i want to know him in a deeper way um for me that's probably the biggest thing is that i just need to be intentional with it that like i actually have to have like a heart about it it's just a heart posture it's not oh gosh i have to do this because you know i have to i'm a christian i have to go to church i have to go to youth group but it's just having a heart posture of just wanting to because you love Jesus. That's good. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, I think for um, if you're trying to work at the consistency part, the biggest thing that's helped me um, is to have a time and a place and a plan. So um, I try to keep the time consistent. I know in the summer it's weird. You probably get up at different times every day. I have this summer. But especially with school starting, that's a great time. Like, hey, Every morning at 6.50, I'm going to roll out of bed, and my place is going to be on my living room couch. Having that consistency, it helps you uh, form a habit when you do the same thing over and over, and then having a plan. So one thing you can do, our church does soap, um, so that's uh, scripture observation application prayer, and it has two chapters of the Bible for you to read every day. You can get a bookmark, so you can keep it right in your Bible. Um, so having that time that place and the plan, I just think that that really helps stay consistent. Yeah. Um, I would, first of all, repeat all the things that they said. I like that time, place, plan. Do that. That's important. Time, place, plan. Remember that. Um, the big thing for me, first of all, I am miserably inconsistent. So whoever wrote this question, let's chat later. We are the same person. Maybe I wrote it. I don't know. Um, I, I do know I didn't write that. Anyways. Um, the my first encouragement is don't get discouraged like it's hard um developing habits is really tricky especially if you have just like an inconsistent life or an unstable like home situation to be like i'm gonna have stable things in my life even though everything outside of my life is out of control um i'll stop talking the one the thing that has been the most successful in my life is when i have a friend doing it with me like I have a good friend, her name's Tiffany, she's great. Um, but the most consistent I've ever been when it comes to um, being intentional about spending time with God was when I knew I was going to get a text from a friend saying, hey, I just got done spending time with God, or I was responsible for sending a text saying, hey, I just got done spending time with God. So find a friend, and even better, find a mentor. And I can promise you that there are seven, seven of us, seven quality mentors sitting on the stage and one in the sound booth um, ask someone to do it with you, that has been the biggest success for me. Yeah, I would definitely echo what everyone has said so far. Um, yeah, I think for me personally, I, I went along with what Reagan was saying. Um, definitely, like, create this space. I think this is helpful to create a space that is meaningful for you. Um, I created a prayer closet where I put like special uh, verses that meant something to me on the wall and uh, just little things that I heard from sermons or from books that really impacted me. And so I would go there after work every day and it was something that I got so excited to go in my prayer closet, spend some time uh, worshiping, spend some time in God's word. Um, and. Yeah, it was something that I did look forward to. So I would encourage that for you guys to create this special space for you and God. Maybe it's making a cup of coffee of your favorite blend in the morning or your favorite tea at night or whenever you want to do it. Just making it a special place for you and God to spend time together. Something I haven't heard mentioned yet is making use of an app like the Bible app. Um, there's lots of great... Um, devotional plans, Bible reading plans, and it can help you stay consistent because it will remind you. Right. You'll, you'll get a notice on your phone or on your tablet saying, hey, it's time to read the Bible today. And some people think making it automated or having an automated reminder takes away from the specialness of getting into the Word of God. Honestly, a lot of us just need a reminder to do it. So, you know, my suggestion would be to do that or challenge yourself. Um, you know, Rachel had mentioned friends texting her. 
maybe you do a challenge where you say, hey, I'm gonna get on Facebook or Instagram and read a verse a day to somebody. And that can make sure that you're accountable to get on there and read, read the Bible. Um, I've been doing that recently. I'll read a verse or two a day and just share it on my Facebook page. And it reminds me to get into the Bible that way as well. I was the poster child for stinking at consistency. <laughs> Uh, if there was someone that could not read their Bible because it just was not that interesting to me, that'd have been me. And uh, one of the things I still, I occasionally still carry around, like for those of you that like, wow, you guys sound great. Let me do all this. Yeah, no, I'm not. One of the things I did was take a three by five card. I don't know if you guys still use this, but when I was in school, we wrote everything on these. I put a scripture on a three by five card and that probably went in my back pocket. And I walked around all week with that same scripture, and every time, because I stick stuff in my back pockets all the time, every time my hand went to my back pocket, I pulled that same scripture out and read that same scripture over and over and over. Well, the next week, I would be like, I need to find a new scripture. And that was where I started my consistency, was read like reading one scripture it was one scripture a week but it was always in my pocket or it was in my planner for school or it was in my backpack where I'm going to constantly touch it and stuff so if it seems like wow you guys have such grandiose ideas but that's not for me because I am not the poster child of consistency I encourage you to start small start with something that you can do daily that can become a habit because that habit will lead into better habits and like now, the first thing I do when I wake up, I want to read my Bible because I long to spend time with my Savior. And that was not me at your age. Me at your age was doing, I don't even know what. It was not reading my Bible for sure. But I started feeling like, I really want to get to know God better. Like, how am I going to do that? And it was a three by five card with the scripture on it. Like this one is 2 Corinthians 3, 5. Not that we are competent in ourselves to claim anything for ourselves, but our competence comes from God. Like, just scriptures that you come across that, like, stand out to you or say, you happen to hear Joe read a scripture on his Facebook, and that one really resonated with you? Write it down. Look at it. Think about what that means in your life. How can I apply this to my life? Think about it for a week. Even if it's just one scripture, you're still reading God's word. You're still doing what the Bible says and hiding it in your heart so that we cannot sin against God. Can I share two quick thoughts? I'm so sorry. Go quick, fast, make uh, fast. So make I, just on a practical side, spend time with Jesus before you spend time on social media. Easiest Ooh. way to actually make sure it happens because we're all guilty of, oh, I'll just be on TikTok for 10 minutes and then six hours goes by. Don't do that. Just make it a habit. And like... I have literally found that sometimes social media motivates me to spend time with God because I decide to spend time with God first. And I was like, I want to check TikTok. Um, what was my other thought? Also, you just have to want to. Like, it has to be a priority. And even if it's because you know that it's good for you and you're not super close to Jesus yet, that's fine. Make it a priority. Amen. Well, awesome, man. That all, we ran a little long, but that's okay. How many of y'all enjoyed that? That was good. Hear from somebody else and me and myself. Give it up. Come on, give it up for them. That was awesome. They took their time to come up here and, and share their thoughts, their testimony, their experience. That was awesome. I, I loved that. That was sweet. 